defense and it's about the influence of skin disease on the psychological health of a patient. So what I'm going to be covering today is about me and my research. Um, I'm going to have an introduction, then some background information, a review of related literature, methodology, my results, the conclusion, and then my experience with gifted gabber. So about me and my research. My name is Tanisha Singh and I'm a sophomore at Redmond High School in Washington. Um, my topic stood out to me for many reasons, um, primarily because I have eczema and I've experienced firsthand how skin diseases can affect someone's self-esteem and mental well-being. And as a result, I am passionate about exploring the connection between physical and mental health. And again, my research topic is about the influence of a skin disease on the psychological health of a patient. Introduction. So my main research questions were what are the psychological effects of having a skin disease and how can we care for the mental health of skin disease patients? So this question is important because there are many positive effects to researching about the psychological effects of skin diseases. Many people don't talk about the psychological effects and by bringing attention to them, we can help reduce the stigma um, associated with, men um, with mental health related to skin diseases. We can also encourage treatments that address both the physical and emotional changes faced by patients, which will enhance the quality of life for a patient. So here's some background information. In order to understand the psychological impact of a skin disease, it's important to understand the importance of the mental and physical health of an individual. Skin diseases such as acne, eczema, and psoriasis are often chronic, which makes them very distressing, especially considering they can be very difficult to hide. And these connections are very wide. These conditions are very widespread, meaning they affect millions of people worldwide with symptoms that range from mild to severe, which can cause severe physical discomfort, such as itching or pain. However, beyond all of these physical symptoms, there's a societal pressure to maintain clear skin due to mental health issues. Additionally, research has shown that individuals with skin diseases are significantly more likely to experience mental health issues, such as depression and anxiety, making it critical to explore connection between physical and mental health further. Understanding the relationship between mental and physical health is the key to providing complete care for patients that address both the emotional and physical aspects of living with a skin disease. Literary review. So these are the things that are currently known about the mental effects of a skin disease. So the psychological impacts of a skin disease can be just as severe, if not greater than those associated with other chronic medical conditions. This is significant because when people think of a skin disease, they typically think it's not a huge deal. They think it's purely like a vanity issue because they only think your physical appearance is affected. However, um, research by Zhang and many others prove otherwise. Additionally, there's a reciprocal relationship between stress and skin conditions. Chronic skin conditions can trigger psychological and stress responses, and this stress can aggravate the skin condition, which creates a never-ending cycle. Additionally, patients with eczema have an increased risk of having anxiety and depression by about 1.3 to 1.5 times compared to people who don't have eczema, whilst patients with psoriasis have a very similarly increased risk. Lastly, most treatments for skin diseases tend to be tend to focus on ensuring that the physical symptoms are relieved, while the emotional and psychological support is completely ne neglected. Methodology. So this is a literature review, and I reviewed evidence from primary source articles about skin conditions that also portray the psychological consequences. So I use databases such as PubMed, among many others, with keywords including skin disease, psychological impact mental health, and eczema. So the information collected from all these resources, I reviewed them for common trends. And as someone with eczema, my personal experiences were also documented to support the findings from the reliable databases. 
So the results showed that the psychological effects of a skin disease are a lot more severe than one met might have originally thought. However, there are solutions to help this. Visible skin conditions can cause stigma and isolation, which obviously heighten emotional distress. And as a result, studies have shown that if you integrate mental health support into dermatological care, patient outcomes can significantly increase. Societal beauty standards significantly exacerbate psychological distress, which means that if we have a more compassionate, complete approach and a view of beauty, then we can reduce the burden on individuals with skin conditions. In conclusion, people with skin diseases suffer from a variety of side effects due to both mental and physical conditions. So if we combine the physically painful treatments with the neglect towards one's mental health, patients will suffer a lot more than what's visible to meet the eye. Adding mental health support into dermatological care can help healthcare professionals support their patients by managing their emotional issues of living with a skin disease, which improves their quality of life due to the reciprocal relationship between mental health and skin conditions. In addition, it was shown that patients are often exposed to perfect and idealized images that may cause depressive and shameful feelings on social media, which makes those with visible skin conditions more susceptible to mental health issues such as depression and low self-esteem. My research experience. So Dr. Kate was extremely helpful throughout this entire process, and she gave me a lot of ideas for content that significantly elevated my research paper, so I'd like to thank her. And then Professor Virgil was also very helpful during this process, and he taught me a lot about research ethics. Um, he helped me reword my paper, and he helped me make it easily understandable for all audiences. So I'd also like to thank him. And then, obviously, I'd like to thank Gifted Gabber for their help, because without them, none of this would have been possible. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. You can stop sharing, Tanisha. Uh, I know eczema is um, is is such a really hard disease. Both my sons uh, struggle with eczema. Um, my older son is pretty much allergic to everything, steroidal. I mean, it, it, growing up, it, it was quite bad. And uh, I know this is going to sound really, really bad, but out of the blue, his armpits were black. Okay. So um, when we took him to uh, the doctor, they said that it was aluminum in the, in the, not, um, in the, sorry, the deodorant. So oh it's, it's like, I'm sorry. It's like so, so difficult being with eczema. I know yeah. that. And um, I know, I'm, so, I'm, I'm sorry, the phone will keep ringing if I don't answer. So hold on one second. Professor Kate, please ask her the question. Oh, sure. Okay. So you and I spent an awful lot of time together. Okay. Yeah. Especially talking about, um, you know, the negative side effects that social media, um, can um, have on somebody who doesn't feel like everyone else does because of some type of kin skin condition. Yeah. Um, but I think, and maybe this is more of a statement, but maybe you can just tell us if this would be something that you think you could do. Um, mm -hmm. instead, instead of, um, you know, social media um, making people feel bad, and in light of the fact that we've talked a lot about, you know, efforts to inform people, educate people. Um, do you think it's possible that we could use social media to raise awareness and let people know more about skin diseases? And in essence, it would really probably help those, it would help everybody, those without to be more empathetic, those with, with some ideas that might really help them. What do you think about that? I definitely think it's possible. And I know that some people actually have started creating like self positivity accounts where they post like completely unfiltered versions of themselves. So I think that's helpful, but still the vast majority of social media is covered with images um, of like idealized um, and photoshopped people. So I definitely think it's possible and I hope that it becomes a lot more normalized in the future. But yeah. Yeah, and and Tanisha, I need you to take it as an activism as well, because mm -hmm. there are a lot of teens there who struggle with with all kinds of eczema, and it's mostly around the edges of the skin, and they are they wear the full sleeves, whole sleeves, and they get. I used to have it like all down my hand, and my hand was yes. like sandy and red looking, and 
Yes, yes. And and you need to, and, and I know um, um, people who have had sclerosis, so their skin is shedding all the time and, and everything. There's so much stigma to uh, against them and they really go through a lot of mental health issues that uh, you uh, you mentioned. I mean, I, I, I keep telling that I got the mother a lot of allergies in my house because my, my sons have all kinds of allergies and my younger son was diagnosed with celiac disease so mm. it's it's really difficult uh for for people for people with skin allergies and everything to like uh like yeah mm -hmm. and on top of that the stigma and uh, getting bullied over something that's out of their control so yeah thank you for doing this okay and thank you for making it uh, your personal journey and we are here to support it, okay Thank you.